Hello and welcome to this Pivotal Container Service video demo. I'm Dan Basket, Tech Marketing of Pivotal Software. In this video, I'll be deploying my Kubernetes clusters across availability zones, including leaders with etcd. Let's take a look at an overview of my configuration. Here I have three availability zones, Central 1F, 1A, and 1C, and a management and services subnetwork that span all three availability zones. We'll demonstrate the deployment and use of this cluster, as well as simulate some etcd failures to show how Bosch adds unique value to the Kubernetes environment. We'll start inside Pivotal Operations Manager. If you click the Google Cloud Platform tile, you'll see the configuration for the Bosch Director. Here we want to look at the Availability Zone config. And we'll see we have Central 1F, 1A, and 1C. And then the networks, our management subnetwork subnet defined for Pivotal Application Services, and finally one for our services. Inside here we can see that each of these is defined across our three availability zones. Now we can go look at our Pivotal Container Service tile. Here we see PKS is configured to use those three availability zones. Now if we look at the plan we're going to deploy, we'll see three master etcd nodes, and six worker nodes, and those are all spread across those three availability zones. Now we can use the PKS CLI to create the cluster. If you just type PKS at the command line, you'll get an output of all the available commands. First we need to log in to the PKS API. And once we do that, we can create our cluster, giving it a name, an external IP address, and then the plan we want to use to create the cluster. In this case, medium, which was our three availability zone configuration. You can use PKS cluster, cluster name, to monitor the state of the cluster. I'll add it to a watch command so I can repeat the PKS command multiple times until it's complete. So here we're getting a status every two seconds. In another terminal, we can log into the Bosch director so we can watch what Bosch is doing to create the cluster. To make things easier, I'll set an alias so that I can refer to this cluster as PKS using other CLI commands. Take a look at the VMs that Bosch has created and the tasks that they're running. You can see it has created the VMs for my cluster and now it's installing software on each of those nodes. And we continue to monitor tasks as they continue processing. Our systems installing add-ons which are things like the Kubernetes dashboard. Now the cluster reports that the create has succeeded. You'll notice we have three master IP addresses, as well as the port we need to access. We can quit out of that command, then go back to the Bosch director. And we'll use some Bosch commands to go do a little research on etcd and where it's running. So here we have our service instance and the VMs. We'll see three masters. We'll log into one of those masters. And then using the etcd control command line, we'll take a look at the cluster health. See three members, all healthy. We can also do a list of the members, and this will tell us which one is running as the leader. In this case, it's the one starting with the AE55. We'll put that information aside for a moment. So we have a little more configuration to do on the cluster itself. So if we grab the cluster UUID, here we can see the nodes in the cluster. But since we have three etcd nodes, we'll need to install a load balancer in front of those so we can access them all from the same IP. Now we can go to the load balancer configuration. And we should have a load balancer pre-configured with the IP address that we passed the PKS command line. We'll just need to fill in the backend configuration, which are the hosts that are running etcd. 
Now if we look at the list of hosts running our Kubernetes cluster. We can limit that just to masters. And then we can add those three masters to the load balancer. Now with the load balancer created, we should be able to access the PKS cluster. So we issue a get credentials, and that will pull down the credentials to our local client so we can log into the Kubernetes API. Then we can initialize Helm and use some kubectl commands to set up a service account that we can use to install software. Now we're going to use a Helm chart to install Elasticsearch. The first step is to install the Elasticsearch operator. So once we initiate that, we can take a look at the Kubernetes dashboard and watch for the pods to create. And once that's all done, can then move on and use the operator to install Elasticsearch itself. Is this is another Helm install command. We're going to enable Kibana, the dashboard for Elasticsearch. And once again, bring up the dashboard and wait for that to finish installing. And now we're online. So if we look at the Kibana service, see the port that it's running on, the pod that it's in. We can use that information to port forward the Kibana port so we can access the dashboard for our Elasticsearch cluster. And Kibana loads, so we have Elasticsearch up and running. Now it's time to do the failure testing we talked about in the overview of the demo. You can log into Bosch Director, and let's go back and look at that information about the etcd cluster that we viewed earlier. Check the cluster health, and then look at the members. And once again, we see that AE55 is the leader of the etcd cluster. So with that information we can go back to our VM management tool, put that cluster in and then stop the etcd leader. And then do another watch command and this time we're going to do a watch of the member list. So we'll see that AE55 is the leader. And when the node goes down, that should change, which it just did. And now 9F93 is the leader. So we take a look at the cluster health. We'll see that one of our nodes is indeed down. Now one of the nice things about Bosch is it's continually monitoring for things like this. So if we go back and look at our masters, we'll see that there are indeed three masters that are up now. And really all we need to do is update the configuration of our load balancer.
to tell it that that server is back online. So I'll add the instance into the load balancer, update it, and then go back to the command line. And from there, we can check the cluster health and member list again. So I'll log back into the Bosch director. Check the member list. And now we have a new leader, as we saw before. And the cluster health shows three healthy etcd cluster nodes. So we'll now grab the UUID for the new leader, 9F93. And we're going to completely delete that one. So now we'll lose the VM and all the installed software and the configuration of that software. So if we watch the member list, we'll see the leader change again. So that now AE55 is the leader again. Now if we wait a couple minutes and flip back to our display of our nodes, we'll see that once again, Bosch has recreated that master or leader node and the load balancer needs to be updated again. So we'll fix the load balancer config by adding in the newly created instance. Now with the load balancer configuration fixed, the Kubernetes API should be back up and fully operational. And to test that, I'm going to install the Postgres operator using Helm, which again will use the Kubernetes API and show that it is back online. Do a Helm install of that Postgres operator. And go back into the Kubernetes dashboard. And we'll see it's starting to come online. And now it's 100% online and it's ready to install Postgres. And that concludes the demo. In this demo, we deployed a Kubernetes cluster using PKS across availability zones and showed how Bosch increased the overall availability of the cluster by restarting or recreating the etcd cluster nodes as needed.